everyone. Can you hear me? Let me know if everyone can hear me and see the slide here today and the arrow pointing. Terrific. Happy Labor Day, everyone. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to give you a nice lecture here today discussing what I love to talk about, which is shorting stocks. And for those of you that don't know me or haven't heard of me, I prefer to short. So we're going to talk today about shorting, and we're going to talk about shorting stocks, although I'm sure some of you may ask about the market. And if we have time at the end here today, we can look at the market because the overall market, and by the market I mean the SPY and the Qs, which I like to look at the, those two ETFs, they actually had a little tumbly today. So if we have time at the end, we can discuss that. But today we're going to talk about how you can make $20,000 a month trading half hour a day shorting stocks. Okay? If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com and you can feel free to call me if you have any questions at 929-3200-427 or feel free to email me. And I do tape a lot of webinars and plays of the days. I do. So if you want to subscribe to any of my social media, I'd go to YouTube. Uh, in fact, I'm taping the webinar tonight, so you can go back and review it later. So we're getting into the fall period here in New York, and it's a great time to trade. And one of the reasons fall is a good time to trade is because there's earning season. It's the last quarter of the earning season for companies to report for the calendar year. It's also a busy time. A lot of people are active with their money. And interestingly enough, September typically is a time when the market tends to have a pull in. I had a long discussion about this in the trading room last week. I, I do think that September possibly could be bullish this year. However, that being said, if it does stick to the calendar and end up being bearish, which today was a bearish day in the market, then of course it would be even a better time to short, okay, which is what we're going to talk about today. So how can you earn $20,000 a month in the market? That's a lot of money for most people and enough to, to pay most people's bills or earn uh, you know, an income doing this if you really want to train full time, although the hours aren't full time, but if you want to do this as your career, as your job, you know, that's well over 200 grand a year. That's a, that's a lot of money, okay? So it roughly averages out to be about $1,000 a day. And we're going to talk about last week's trades. Specifically, we're going to go over each gap last week, each stock symbol last week, and show you how you can do this. It, it really is about the consistency. If you are all over the place with your trading, and if you've traded before and you're here tonight, uh, you know what I'm talking about. If you're new, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you've dabbled in the market in the past, then I'm sure that you know, you can be all over the place. You can have good days, you can have bad days, you can have good weeks, you can have bad weeks, you can have good months, you can have bad months. But in order to be on track to do this as your job, as your career, or something that you can feel confident in, even, even looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I feel good about what I'm doing, trading, I like this, I wanna spend my time with this, I wanna take the chance that I'm taking when I risk money in a trade, which you're, every time you take a trade, you risk money, okay? Every time I do, I risk money. You never really know, which is why you stops. And we'll talk about that tonight too. But it's, it's, the, it's the consistency, okay? One of the reasons I'm really good at running my trading room is because I have a lot of confidence in my system. I have a lot of confidence in what I do. I've been trading for about eight years, almost nine now, but that's really not a long time in the scope of life. It seems like a long time to me, but it's really not. It's just that I'm, I'm doing nothing but one strategy, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. So I'm very consistent. So if you want to make, I think, any money, even 500 bucks a week, okay, 50 bucks a day, you have to be consistent. You can't have big swings in your account up and down and up and down because First of all, it's going to wreak havoc on your mental state, not to mention your account, and then you will not be confident, which, which is a problem, okay? So can you make this kind of money in a half an hour? Yes, and one of the reasons is because that's the time of day when there's a lot of momentum, and momentum and volatility is how you'll make money as a trader, but you got to get the direction right. And again, today we're going to talk about shorts. So how can you do it? Using one strategy. The strategy that I trade is gaps. So for those of you that don't know what a gap is, we're gonna look here at a daily chart. 
This is one back from a couple weeks ago, COH. Now, this is a daily chart. You can see down here the days. I scooped it back up until about March, April of 2017. So the stock had earnings. What did it do? It gapped down. It closed here and then it gapped down. Okay. Now, when the stock gapped, what is a gap? It's when a stock closes at one price and opens the next day at a different price. So that's what a gap is. And in, in the case of a gap down, it closes and it opens at a lower price than where it closed. So the market closes at 4 o'clock Eastern time, opens the next day at 9.30. So this was a gap down, okay? Over here was a gap up. Now, I didn't do this one here, but I'm, I want to show you. So the stock closed here, gapped up. In this case, if you had gone long the day on this day here, guess what? you would have made money going long this it is a gap too but today we're going to talk about the shorts so either way do you see the moves this is the daily move the stock had here a lot of momentum if you went long a lot of momentum if you went short so you see here these big bars okay this is a big bar and this is a big bar so you want to trade these days when you get these kinds of moves do you see the day before here it was like it eh. it almost looks like the stock didn't go anywhere and then you have all these other days in here. What's the stock gonna do? It's very challenging to predict the directional bias the stock's gonna move on any given day unless, unless it gaps. And you have a way to predict the direction of the gap, which is going long or short. Because most days stocks go with market direction or the sector. Something's happening in the sector, for example, okay? Like I didn't actually look today what was happening in the oil stocks but I'm sure something happened today with them because of what's going on with the hurricane, all right? And now there's another hurricane coming, so I'm sure oil stocks have gotten a lot of play in the last couple of days, and probably today's particularly. We can look at some of those tonight, too. But, you know, you go back here and just look here and at this chart, you're like, well, how did you know to go long this year or short this year or any of these things, and it's not, this didn't really move that much. Do you see, this is where you want to be. You want to trade on these days, and you want to pick these ones and this here was a gap too okay this is a gap up closed here gapped up anyways this is how you make money in the market trading momentum and volatility in the correct direction and you got to be able to predict it before the move happens otherwise you're chasing the move or it's too late or you can't make any money or you're at the whim obviously of the market itself so it's about the how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy that's profitable if you wanna do it consistently. So what I do is I trade gaps that are called professional gaps. And the reason they're called professional gaps is because professional traders and hedge funds are creating those gaps. And we'll talk more about that too. But it's, it's profitable because you've got momentum in them, okay? So what stocks should you trade? This is what I focus on. I focus on rating gaps. And again, we'll talk about this too. I use a checklist where I'm looking to trade gaps that rate per my 26 point rating system. And then I'm trading them in the direction of the gap. Like COH would have been a short, it gapped down. So I'm looking to short stocks that are gapping down. Now that doesn't mean you can short every gap down, but I'm qualifying them based on the 26 points, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And when am I looking to get in them? Early in the morning, when they open and set up and trigger, between 9.30 and 10 a.m. So the nice thing about this system, what I do, is that I am looking to actually get in the trades and get out of the trades quickly, okay? So one strategy is all that you need in order to make money in the market, and I think that that is really the key for most people to get good at becoming traders. If you get really, 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 really good at something, you're gonna be able to replicate it over and over and over again, just like playing a sport or playing a musical instrument. If you're trading five different strategies, you know, or, or even in different markets, Forex, futures, you know, it's the, stock, the US stocks, if you're doing too many different things, how are you ever gonna become an expert? How are you going to do it, okay? In order to, 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 to get good at something, you gotta do it almost every day, okay? a lot, at least four days a week, if not five. And you also have to focus on just that one thing. So, it, you know, trading is really about a certain lifestyle. You got to be able to fit it into your schedule. 
which for me is between 9.30 and 10. I get up in the morning around 7.30, 8 o'clock. I'm prepping to trade at least an hour, an hour and a half before the market. And you have to be able to be so focused in that period that you can do everything you need to do to make the money that you need to make in that short time frame. So I, I always say to people, listen, you can be perfect for half an hour. You can be perfect for one hour a day. I do not sit at my trade desk and trade all day from 9.30 to 4, okay? First of all, I'd be very, very tired doing that. And I, it would be hard for me to be perfect for six hours plus. But you can be so on point in that time period right in the morning that you can do it and you can do it well, okay? So if that's what it takes, then just do it. Okay, and then you can have the rest of the day to yourself because if you can make money in the morning, 500 bucks a day, $1,000 a day or more, okay, depending on your size, which we'll talk about too, you don't have to work the rest of the day. You don't have to do another job. You don't have to trade any more trades. And there are days where trades don't work out where I lose. Okay, last week was a good week. There weren't any losers, but obviously there are some days I lose in trades. My system has an 80% win ratio system, which means two out of every 10 trades are gonna lose. Eight out of every 10 trades are gonna be winners. And even when the trade loses in the morning, you really should stop, okay? Stop, walk away. It doesn't mean you should sit at your desk and trade all day, all right? Any questions so far? It is about the focus, it is about the quality in order to make this kind of money. And I can't stress that enough. If I lined up a thousand people that trade or have ever traded or ever done one trade in their life or ever taken a trading class or ever did anything, I'm telling you right now, people trade and they, are, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They're not good at it. They're not focused and they're all over the place. And many, many people email me and ask me about different things and watch my videos and they have never done my class. One of the things that I made and it was a good business decision is that anyone that joins my live trading room has to have done my course. And that means that you will understand what you're doing when you're doing the trade when I say it in the room live. You will get the concept. You will have the confidence yourself in what it is. You will look at the chart. You will understand it. You will see COH. You will see all the trades we're going to go over here from last week. You will see them and then you will know this is a good one and you will know why. It's the understanding behind it. When, when you're so all over the place with so many different things, it's hard to understand every concept. Okay, and it is a skill. Trading is a skill that, that you have to learn and it takes time to learn the skill. And it's just like somebody, again, I'm, I'm gonna refer back to sports because it's just an easy example. If someone's extremely good as a football player, chances are that that's what they're good at. They play professional football. They're probably not a great baseball player, tennis player, soccer player. Do you know what I'm saying? They're, they play football. That's what they're really, really good at. That's what they get paid a lot of money for. And that's it. And that's what they focus on. All right. So what are some of the reasons to trade gaps before we get into the nitty gritty of the trades from last week? <laughs> the trades set up quick. I'm trading on a one minute chart when the stocks move and particularly in shorts, they move fast. For example, what happens? A stock can drop quickly and fall quickly. Why? When stocks drop, okay, they tend to drop because of what? Does anyone know why did what makes stocks drop? What made the market drop today? Let's talk about that. Why? Why did the market drop today? Does anybody know? In fact, here, let me let me just see if I can quickly pull up the market. Can everybody hear me? What made the spy fall today? Here, let's look at a 15 minute. Here is the open today. Boom, we dropped. Low in the day today in the SPY was almost 245-ish. Okay, we opened today at 247.26. We had about a $2.20 some cent drop in the market today, 25 cent drop. What happened with that? Why did we, what, 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 what was this? I'm talking to you people. There's a decent amount of people here. Kathy, Kathy can guess. <laughs> Since nobody else wants to guess. What made this market fall today? And this is not a cheapy weepy. The spiders at a price point of 247 something today dropped $2.20 some cents. Why? 
How did that? <laughs> Kathy said it went crazy. I wouldn't call this crazy, but it went crazy where, Kathy? Come on, this is common sense, people. Everybody's still on Labor Day vacation mode. <laughs> Come on, why? Kathy's saying at the open, yes, but what made this go like this? What is this? It went where, Kathy? I'm going to teach Kathy how to trade one of these days. It's bound to happen here. Okay, here we have sell high, buy low, said more sellers and buyers. RR said the hurricane. <laughs> Which one? Ida or the Irene or what's the, what's the new one? <laughs> or Harvey. Institution stepped in and sold it. Eclipse Trader said. These are all good answers. Irma, there we go. That was it. I got to watch the news tonight. Okay, selling. You're all pretty much right, but it was selling. So it was selling pressure. So you wouldn't have something drop without selling. So you had selling. So you had more selling than buying today in the market on the day. So we're just talking about the day. And we actually ended up closing, not, we actually ended up closing kind of strong here. I don't want to get too off target here, but we actually had a strong close considering the drop off today. But the point is today, we wouldn't have gone like this and we wouldn't have fallen without selling. Okay, very basic, but good. Don't overcomplicate this when you think about things. Just think common sense, common sense, common sense, okay? Again, what's another reason to trade gaps as a strategy? Good risk to reward setups. And we'll talk about those and they're on the one minute chart. And you can book money early in the morning. I like to trade between 9.30 and 10. So that's fairly easy. I'm in the Eastern time zone. For those people that are on the West Coast, it's really early. But you, you, know, you have your day to yourself and you're done by very early in the morning. And also long-term trading. And I'm going to refer back to the market. If you had been long every bullish gap going back however many years in the market, the market has continued to increasingly make brand new all-time highs. So you can look at gaps and read long-term moves for swing trades or investments, which is actually very, very important. Now, I focus, like I said, on the day-to-day -day trades, but the fact is you can use gaps for long-term trading. And as I said earlier, one of the other reasons to trade gaps is momentum because you're, it's gonna be very challenging for you to make money in stocks that don't move that much. People always ask me about the penny stocks. I do not trade penny stocks. I don't like anything about the penny stocks. You have to take so much size. I feel like the risk is just too great in them to make any kind of money. They're also wild and they're not as regulated as normal stocks. You don't have the same momentum. You don't have the same moves. You don't have the same volume. Something like this was, was Friday's gap in AMBA, okay? This is a one minute chart. This was the close of the previous day up here. Stock closed around 54 something. Gap down here in the morning around 45 something, okay? So this is again a gap down and see the momentum in the stock. So you see here where the stock opened around 45 something. This is just in the beginning of the day, just in the first beginning part of the day the stock dropped down here and broke $43 and went to 43 something. So the stock dropped almost $4 from the open. That's momentum. That's a lot. That's a big, 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 big move. Okay. So when you get big moves in stocks and a lot of momentum, then you can make large profits. But you got to get in the trade right. You got to get in the right direction. And you have to be able to pick which stock symbol to watch. Because if you were looking for something like AMBA on a scanner, you missed... Now I'm going back here, I'm just showing you because this is, this is the open at 9.30. If you, really, if you scan for stocks at 10 a.m., you miss this whole thing. Boom. You miss this whole shebang if you're scanning after 10 because all this happened in the first half hour. And so you don't want to miss this. But you have to find that and pick it and predict it and see it before the open. So let's talk a little bit about shorting. And I showed you some charts in here and we looked at the market today. But as a day trader, you can short stocks or go long stocks, okay? You can do both, and you can make money doing both. Again, got to get in the right direction for how the stock's moving. But most people know how to go long stocks. It's just that not everyone knows how to short stocks. And some people that short stocks don't know how to do it that well. 
okay? Even active traders, a lot of them are really not familiar with how to short correctly. Shorting is a niche. It's something that I, I've been doing since the beginning. I don't know why. It's just, I like it. I think I, it was at the beginning, I made a lot of money one day when I went short and I just said, wow, this is something to it. And I made the money fast and then I kind of was hooked. And if you've never shorted before and you've never made money really quickly or a lot of it really quickly, trust me, when you do, you'll never look back. Because it's easy money if you get the direction and the stock pick right. And, and if you add to its size, it can add really add up. So if you learn how to short stocks, you'll definitely gain an edge because a lot of traders don't know how to do it. All right. And most people that are doing overnight swing trades are not short. Most of them are long. All right. And most of the funds actually are long stocks too, a lot of them. Shorting takes practice and spotting something called weakness, which we're going to talk about too. And shorting stocks really involves panic. It's panic. People are panicking. Like there might have actually been a little bit of panic in the market move today. Again, somebody said the hurricane, somebody, nobody said North Korea, but that might have been some of the panic too, the news of the North Korea overnight. So, so you have that, that little panicking. Now, again, I don't know where we go in the market from, from today to tomorrow, but we did, sh we saw some of that today in the drop down move. Okay. So you can make money shorting on panic, which could be as a result of news like what happened today in the last 24 hours, or it could be something in the sector, or it could be something like an earnings report in a stock, if, if a stock has a certain thing that they come out and say when they have earnings. And I mentioned the fact that fall is a good time to trade because stocks are reporting their quarterly earnings. Now, sometimes they say, da, 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 and you can look at the stock and you say, well, they said everything was great, everything was amazing, but the stock, gap down and sold off. How can that be, Melissa? I do not follow or read fundamentals. If you do, and it helps you trade, great. But don't pick that over what's actually happening in the price and the gap on the live day because it doesn't always match up. It just doesn't, okay? But it is one of the reasons that gaps are created because the reports come out. But it's not necessarily what they say, positive or negative, could create a gap of the stock moving in a certain direction. Because sometimes there's expectations, and the expectation may, may have come out good, but not as good as expected, for example, and then the stock gets selling. And that's just one example of something. So let's look at Tiva. This chart here is falling off a cliff. That's how I would describe this. This was a gap from, gosh, it's a, it's a month ago now, okay? The stock closed the night before up here around 31 something and opened in the morning down here around 25 something, okay? That's what it did. On this day here, it was a short. You could have day traded the short. Guess what? It gapped down the following day too. You could have traded it here short. Guess what? Then it did it again three days in a row. The stock gapped down and this all this red is shorting and selling and boom. And the stock, you can count, in fact, let's do it. The green days on here, one, two, three, four. This is a doji, that's a doji, that's a doji. Four green days in the last month in the stock. That is weakness, people. So it's really, really weak. Tiva is weak. And so if you come and you do my course and you learn from me, you will learn to read this, to see this. And that's how you're able to predict where it's going to go. If something is weak, it's going to fall. If something is strong, chances are, what's the next thing it's going to do? Keep going higher, okay? So what people learn from me in my Golden Gap course is how to reach strength and weakness in daily charts and stocks when they're gapping. And Tiva is just a beautiful, 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 beautiful example of something that is very, very weak. Okay, and today it even continued to fall, which is no surprise because the market fell today, but still. So what does a short look like in a chart? Here is a one minute again. And again, I'm just showing this here. How do you make money shorting? If you short at a certain price and the stock drops, you make money as it's dropping, which is the benefit of shorting. So for example, if you short here at 27.40, and the stock drops to $27, it was the first target, I'm just gonna pick it out. You see over here around 27.40, 27, boom, boom, take it across, 27, you would have made what, 40 cents. 
If you had a thousand shares of that and you shorted it at 2740 and you got out of $27, how much money would you have made? 400 bucks. And when would you have made it? Right in the first couple of minutes of the day. You're not in this trade till four o'clock. You're not waiting till noon. Okay. And this is what you're looking for. Boom, boom. Take it, boom. Take it, get out. Get out. Take it, get out there. Take it, get out there. Do you see it? So this ended up continuing to go, but I just want to show you how, how you can just find something like this. Pick the target, get in and take it. And you don't have to be in all day. Now, 40 cents is not some crazy, crazy big move, but it's the consistency. It's the accuracy. You see it, you like it. HRB, it's a short. You take it, you get out. First target, you take it, get out. The second target, you take it, get out. Take it, get out. Take it, get out. You're just looking, you're looking day after day after day after day after day. I look for the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And this is what I've been doing, like I said, for almost nine years. So it's, it's a routine. But if you are not doing this day after day, if you're all over the place, if you're looking to buy down gaps and short up gaps, if you don't have a way to pick the good ones, which I do, which is the points, you're not seeing this clearly. And you have to see it clearly set up in live time and even before it happens, which is exactly what I do, okay? Very, right now, it's, if, you've, if you've never traded live, if you've never been in my trading room as on a trial or anything, it's, you, you, you may not understand what I'm saying. Some of you probably have. I recognize some of your names in here, but it's easy to go back and look at this and say, oh, doop a doop a doo But I'm telling you, in live time or ahead of time, it's the ability to predict, and that is really what I do extremely well and what you know I'm good at. And actually, that was the reason to come and learn from me. Does anyone have any questions so far? Does anyone have any questions on shorting? Any questions on gaps so far? Are we all good? OK. So let's go over again, very, very basic, what is a gap? What does it look like? So this stock closed here, gapped down, boom. This is HRB. We're going to go over this trade in a minute here. Closed the night before around 29.25, boom. Open in the morning where? I think it opened under 27 or right around 27. Open, rallied, boom, was a short. So this is a gap down. Here's a gap up over here, but again, I like the shorts. JC is saying, how do you find good shorts? I have a rating system that's telling me that something's a good short. I find gaps. I don't know if you, how do I find gaps, if that's your question. I find gaps just through my scanner, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. I have the scanner thing up. I'll show you in a minute. But you can find gaps on any scanner, any scanner at all. Some are free with your platform. But how do you find good ones? That's what I teach in my course using the 26 points. I go through every stock that's gapping down that I like. I make a small watch list like HRB on this day here. This was last week. And I will go through and rate it. And if it rates 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system, then it's telling me it has a high probability of being a good short. High probability means, again, eight out of 10 work. You, you're never going to have 100%. You want high probability to take the risk because you can't make money in the market unless what? Unless you're willing to take risk. But you can find stocks that are gapping all over the place, but that doesn't mean it's a good short because lots of stocks that gap down actually rally. In fact, last week, before the drop that we had today in the spiders, the market gapped down and rallied and was along and actually rallied for like three days after and got bought. So you can't short every gap down. And that's the point I'm trying to make. You have to qualify them. You gotta pick the good ones. And in an ideal world, it's one a day, one stock symbol a day, one trade a day, two at the most. And again, this has to do with the focus, focus, focus. Could you trade more than one thing? Yes. Could you tra trade two things a day? Yes. But, you know, you're much, much better if you can just make the money in one stock, in one symbol, in one trade, and get in and get out. And the sooner you're out, after you get in, guess what? The less you're at risk. The longer you're in a trade, the longer you're at risk, which is why trading overnight and taking overnights actually 
you know, there's more risk to doing that. You know, people don't think about it. Yes, you can make a lot of money overall if you're investing in things for, for years and weeks and years, okay? But you're also at risk. Like, people are up a lot of money right now in the market in their 401ks. They have seen a tremendous rally, all of 2017. 2016 was a big rally that took us up into the highs after the election in the market. But if people don't ever cash out of those, who knows what it'll be when they do? Do you see what I'm saying? They're in overnights. Um, now we have a question here, Eclipse Trader. To do your method, is it necessary to have level two data? Yes. And charts. Um, is it necessary to subscribe to enhanced level two data, visibility into additional market depth beyond level two? No, I do not think that is necessary at all to do that. No. So that's that's my take on that. If you want to, you can. You've got to have the charts. You've got to have the level two, but really what you need is that to take the trades to see the difference between the ask and the bid and the price of the stock, whatever you're trading, but you've got to have the charts, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. Yes, I take my own trades live, Mark's asking me, which is what the trading room is all about, and that's what I'm saying to you when I am calling a trade, and I'm just gonna use this as an example, I will say 10 by 50. The first entry is the, first number is the entry, second number is the stop. I always use stops. I use hard stops, I call them, or limit orders. So if a trade stops me out, then I'm out. But if I have a stop at a certain place, then I want it to be out. And then sometimes if it sets up again, I might do a retake, okay? But really, a trade should go on the first setup. Uh, yes, if you have charts, then you're good. You will need pre-market data in the charts to be able to see the gap. Whether you look at the 15-minute, the 1-minute, the 2-minute, the 5-minute, you need pre-market data because that's where you're going to do the gap readings. Can you do this in futures? RR is asking me. You're just not going to get the same volatility as often. Like, for example, you know, the AMBA. That this thing here, you're not going to get, uh, or even Dutiva, I mean, let's just look at this. You're, you're not going to get this kind of thing every day in futures. You're just not. So could you do it? Yes. But will you get more play in stock symbols in companies? Yes. That's the best, that's the best thing I can tell you. So it's up to you. You can, you can even do this for Forex, except for you only have one gap a week in Forex because there's only one close a week in that market. You know what I'm saying? So anything that gaps you can apply it whether you're going to get the moves five days a week, four days a week, as many moves or as big of a moves as we get in the U.S. stock market, not necessarily. Do you understand? So that's up to you. I know people love to do the futures. You will definitely get better at reading the market and directions in your futures trades by learning how to read charts and reading gaps in charts because you'll be able to better predict the market direction looking at futures. So it will enhance your your your, your chart read. I can't, I don't want to get too off track here what I'm talking about tonight because I don't know how much time we have here. But I, I, I can't, if I could, if I had 10 people that did my class next to me right now that could talk to you just right off the cuff, I will tell you right now, you could be trading for 45 years and think you know everything about trading charts in the market and you would do my gap class and you would look you would you would learn something you would learn something about reading charts i have such a unique way to read charts that everyone that does my class learns something even people who have been trading for a long time the way that i read charts is so unique and that's this is you know i'm charging you for this when you take my class but it is so unique that everyone learns something and you will become better. You will, you will become better at reading charts. You might think you know everything and have traded and learned technical analysis back and forth you know, with your eyes closed, but until you learn what I know, because it's the way that I read gaps, and I'm telling you, that's how I'm able to predict things so well. That's how I'm able to read trends. I'm, I'm reading trends so well because I'm looking at the gaps. And so many people that read charts look at support, they look at resistance, they look at candlesticks, they look at moving averages, they look at Fibonacci's, they look at all kinds of indicators. And that's all great. Whatever helps you and supports you, that's great. But I'm telling you, 
if you learn how to read graphs, you won't need anything else. And you, you will, you will be, have as good of, of an eye as I do to be able to go right at a chart and look at something and say, boom, like I could look at anything you could throw at me right now and probably tell you what it's going to do tomorrow, barring, barring it being gapping tonight. I don't know if anything's gapping tonight, but you could give me something that's gapping tonight and I can look at it for you and tell you probably right now. In fact, we can look at the market when we're done. But, you know, let's finish up here. Uh, how much capital do you need to tie up to short the stocks? It depends where you go to trade. You'll have to talk to your broker. There are proprietary day trading accounts and there are retail day trading accounts. Different ones have different requirements, okay? So you will have to talk to the place that you go at. You need less money in a prop account. They give you more leverage than in a retail account. And in retail accounts, they also will take up more than the required leverage depending on the stock price too. I don't want to get too, too into detail about how much money they take up in margin for shorting stocks, but it is more at a retail place than it is at a prop place. So you have to talk to the brokers about that. I'm not a broker, all right? Okay, back to where we were saying here. Uh, who makes gaps? Large institutional money. So. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen to play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction. This is what I'm talking about, people, the conviction. That the institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money, and that is very important because you will not get stocks that drop $4 like AMBA or $2 or $3 or, 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 or like the market moved down today. You will not get that unless you have power money moving down. Okay, you have to have big size, momentum, a flush. Okay, like like when like today again, I'm just gonna go back to the spy when an institution maybe dumped some of their position into the market today. How did the market fall two and a half bucks or whatever two and two and a quarter today? Somebody could have come in and gone boom. In fact, let's just look at the volume here. Let's look at one of these big bars. Here we go. See it with the square? This is looks like we something must have happened here at noon. Um, I wasn't watching TV at noon today. I had to go to the dentist. Here we have 12 o'clock noon. Look at the volume. See the square all the way over to the top, top left? 3462410. Boom! That's a big number. Do you see it? This is in a 15-minute bar. So there you have it. That is in 15 minutes. That's a whopper. It's a dollar and it's a lot of volume and it's a big red. See it? So that's not a couple of people. <laughs> we didn't do that and we wouldn't have done it and we couldn't have. <laughs> Anyways, somebody had asked earlier about finding gaps. So here's this little thing here and the clock is in front of this, but you have the active stocks here you can look. You could look any time of the day, in the morning, whatever. Here's the gainers, here's the losers. This is in the NASDAQ and the New York Exchange. So you can pick 40 picks from the ups and the downs in either direction here. And you could just get these anywhere off any of your platforms. It's usually for free. You can get a scanner separate if you want. All right, but this is plenty of gappers in here. And again, this is having the up gaps and the down gaps, and you also have the actives. So this is enough picks. So you could have gone over all these. Looks like these were the losers today. I looked at this late. I don't know what it was doing in the pre-market in the morning. I didn't do anything today. I'm, I'm off this week. And I think it's going to be a, a not a busy week to trade for FYI for those of you that are active this week. I closed the room. But if you wanted to look at all these jiggies, you could have looked at them early this morning. You could have looked at them. They probably were red on the day. All right. So getting back to what I was saying, it's a checklist that I look at that tells me what stock symbol to trade. The golden gap checklist is what I call it. And I go through it in the morning. Boom, boom, boom. And I figure it out. What's a good one? 
Thursday with CN. We're going to go over that one too, all right? So it's a 26-point rating system. This measures the gap by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, a big move on the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And number four, precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-to-reward target potential, which is what you want, okay? Any questions so far? Again, it's about high probability. There's not 100%. Nothing is 100%. Follow me? You're looking for high odds. So that's why if something has, for example, 22 points, that's a lot. That's a lot of points. Okay, that, that tells you this is probably a really good one. You're not looking for a perfect score of 26. You're looking for an over 20. Whereas if something has only 15 points, I'm not going to touch that one. Could it work? Maybe. In fact, the market today, I mean, you could have rated the market today. I don't know what it would have rated, but you could have, you could have rated it. But anyways, you know, I just don't do things unless it's over 20 or over. So what I teach in my course is what the points are. How to find the best stock to train each day that's gapping down. How to short it. How to play it on the day. I teach all the entries. And I teach chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level, as I was discussing earlier, which will make a huge difference in the way that you look at charts and trades. Um, if you're interested in information as far as referrals for brokers, you can email me for that. You absolutely, absolutely, with a shadow of a doubt, have to trade at a, a place that actually shows you... Um, you know, that they have good shorts, you want service, you want all of it. Here, we're going to look up here the one, the first trade we're going to do. Hang on one second. Okay, we're going to look at BBY. Okay, we're going to go through last week. So Monday, the 28th, no trades. 29th was BBY. Now, the interesting thing about this gap here was, first it gapped up. In fact, let me go back and show the data here. 29. This was a weird one because the stock had gapped up. So the stock had earnings and gapped up in the morning. See the high? This is at 8 a.m. Do you see everybody? 65.80. Does everyone see that? So the stock actually had gapped up in the morning. And then by the time the market opened, I'm going to take this off here. It had gapped down. 58.17 was the open. See that? So the stock had a huge, huge, huge uh, move down from the original pop. So first it gapped up, then it fell, then it gapped down into the open. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Oops, okay. Anyway, so BBY ended up being a good short. The fact that it had that spike and then collapsed in the morning, though, you had to watch it. Sometimes I'll see something the night before, like I said, at 4 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock. But sometimes you have to wait in the morning. And in this case, it flipped. Because if you had been looking to go long the stock, it didn't work out. And it ended up gapping down. Anyways, you could have been very aggressive and, and did the BBY in here, or you could have done it right in here. So here was a short in BBY with the stop, and you got the drop. Fell into the first target right in here, 56 bucks. This is a one-minute chart. Here's the open 930. Again, here's 10 o'clock. The stock ended up moving all the way down, though. You could have made more money in this. In fact, let's look and see where the low was. But the idea is just to play in the morning, be in, be out. Low on this one here was 54.75.
But anyways, first Morty move was into 56. Let's go back. So entry, 57.50 shares. This is an advanced risk, 2,000 shares. Exit, 56 bucks. Profit, $3,000. Again, this is not the low of the day. That's another thing that's very important. You play the time of the day where you get the momentum. You take it, you get in, you get out. You get in, you get out. You get in, you get out. You can always do second trades in these things. And I do teach in the class a, a later trade, but I don't always do it. You know, in this case here, the stock dropped way more. You could have played it a couple of different times. But again, if you're a morning trader, if you're a gap trader, you're looking and focusing on that specific time. Okay? So let's go back. Again, you could have taken a little bit up here. You did it here. You got the drop into the first target. See it? Okay. So anyways, that was Tuesday. Monday, no trades. HRB was Wednesday the 30th. Again, we looked at this. It was very, 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 very patient last week. I wasn't sure what the volume in the market or stocks would be last week. So I was very patient last week, although, like I said, this week I think will be extremely slow. But it hasn't turned out, you know, things did ended up working and going last week. But I was very, very patient. So I wasn't totally 100% aggressive in the HRB, but I rated the gap. It was a good short. Per the system, it was a short, okay? So you could have shorted HRB and got in, got out. Again, got in, got out. In, out. Quick move down. That's it. In fact, let's pull up a daily on this because I didn't put it in the class here. Oh, we did look at this already. Here was the day, the 30th. So low in the day in this one ended up being 26.56. This has fallen and broken that area since then too. This is really struggling though. This should be way more down though since today's fall in the market. This hasn't even gotten to 26. <laughs> anyway, so here it is. Here was the rally. That's that rally in the one minute. Get the short, get in, boom, get the drop. Okay? Go back. Anyways, entering the short, 27.30, boom, 2,500 shares, exit, 26.80, profit, 12.50. And the other important thing is too, if you have a goal, let's say your goal is $500 a day, $1,000 a day, whatever your goal is daily, if the stock drops, I'm just gonna show this here, if the stock's dropping, 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 you're getting into reversal time, you're watching the market, you're seeing it's gonna push back, okay? And your goal is in for the day for what you're doing, what are you gonna do? Okay, so this again, it's not about getting out of every single move in a short at the low of the day, just like you wouldn't be looking to get out of every single long at the high of the day. You're looking to get the move, make your money. If you have a goal, you want to take it. Okay, you're, 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 it's kind of like you have to look at it like you're doing your job. You do the job, you get out. You take the trade, you got the gap, you got the fill, you're in it, you're up, you're watching, 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 time of the day. Okay, and, and, you, and you have a goal. And you have to have a goal, okay? CN, let's look at CN. So this was another one, gap down. Closed here, gap down. Open, shot up at first, right away, got the drop, okay? Stop, you could have shorted it here, got out. Let's look at this one here, and then I'll bring up the daily. Entry, 22.25, shares, 2,500. This went to the second target, 2150. Profit, 1875 bucks. Again, this is an advanced risk. Okay, let's go look at the daily. So this is CN. This is the last day of August. Day before in here, the 30th. Close the night before, 24.27. Boom. Open in the morning where? 22.16. So here, let's look at the whole chart. 
So what do I do in the morning when I get up in the morning? What do I do? I'm rating the gap. So I'm looking for the pre-market data, okay? So here was CN in the morning. Eight a.m. So at eight a.m. the stock is trading where? Between twenty-one eighty-ish, twenty-two forty-ish, right in here. Then the stock rallies. Okay, ran up to twenty-three. This is eight thirty in the morning. Then it dropped again, eight forty-five. Then it dropped again, nine, nine fifteen. Okay, so this all in here is where I'm rating the stock. Because anything could change at any moment. And then it, as it turns out here, here's where it opened at 9.30. Actually, it opened almost where it opened here at 8 o'clock when it first gapped. Let me just look at that here. We opened at 22.16, and in the morning, we were at 22.10 when we first opened on the day. I just noticed that now. Yeah. So anyways, here's the drop. NCN, drop down, short it in the morning, get in, get out. Went to the first target, went to the second target, okay? Rallied up. Again, you could have done it again in the afternoon, but why? Here's, this is what you want to play. You want to do this. Okay, we'll go back. Oops, here. You want to do this. Any questions at all by anyone so far? Any questions at all? Okay, and then let's look at Friday. So Friday was, you know, an unusual day. I never thought we'd get a gap like this on a Friday, but you know, like I said, last week ended up being way more busier than I thought with stocks falling. And you just never know. I mean, you just never know. This stock just fell absolutely off the planet. In fact, I looked at this today, the stock I mean, the stock is really lower. Talk about weakness. We're going to pull up the daily chart here, but the the day trade on this, this is a one minute chart on the AMBA. You had to be very aggressive, and if you if it if you were you paid short of the stock here, put the stop, fell off the planet. I mean, this was just to get a move in something like this. Actually, you know. This is just a phenomenal move to happen here in the beginning part of the morning. And you just never know. Because when you when you get a move like this in the first bar, you know, it sets up, you do it, you put the stop, but again, you know, it's it's the rating. So the entry here was aggressive, but A, it really paid, and B, the stop rated really, really good. Um, it, I mean, it was just one of these ones where the rating pinpoints it. In fact, what did this rate? I didn't hear a laugh. I'm going to look it up, actually, what this rated. Because um, I didn't put it in the class here. I think this. I think that rated 24 points. i gotta, I got to look it up. Anyways, the entry here, 45.80. Short share quantity, 2,000. Exit, again, 43 bucks was the target. It fell right into it. As soon as it starts backing up, boom, take it. This ended up continuing, though, even more. But again, if something's falling, falling, falling. You bar by bar it. Boom, boom, boom. This was a really, 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 really nice trade, okay? And it was because of the entry, it was because of the aggressiveness, it was because of the risk, and, and it sold off like crazy. So you'll get ones like this, 5,800 bucks. It was almost six grand. Advanced risk means anything more than $1,000. $1,000, and some of these trades, a the risk is, was 1,500 or a little bit more. So when you are trading for a decent amount of time or have the money and know what to do, you can take 2,000 shares of something like AMBA. Actually, this, is not, this wasn't even a big price point for, the, for to take 2,000 shares, but the stop, the stop was over. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the daily. Advanced risk is $1,000 minimum. And some of these were a little bit more because it's, you take the trade, you get the setup. Sometimes they happen so fast. Sometimes your risk might be 1200, 1300. Sometimes it might be 900, but anything a thousand dollars. Look at this here. Wow. This is lower. This fell into the close here. 4060. Here, let's just look at this. Wow. Look at this. This chart's lower. Here, you want to look at weakness? Somebody's asked me that. We were talking about this earlier. This is weak. AMBA is weak. Boom. There you go. You had follow through today from yesterday. 
this would have done this no matter what. This is 100% its own. Doesn't have anything to do with the market. This is weak, 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 weak. All right, let's go over to the daily. Friday was the first. So here, when you get something like this, you're bar by barring it, but you have the targets in mind. But again, something's red. You're watching, watching, watching. You don't necessarily have to take the trade out, but you're watching, watching, watching. And you've got the numbers ahead of time. Anyways, this was not a small stop is my point. Okay. But it's set up very well. Set up very good. Okay. So the gap tells you with the rating system that you can look to short the stock between 9.30 and 10 when it sets up, but you don't know until the market opens, which is after 9.30, if it sets up or not. I'm not getting in these trades in the pre-market. I'm not, I'm not shorting in this period here. All of this is happening here. Actually, this was at night. So this is all the night before. This was earnings. The stock fell all the night before. It was at 52, 50s, 50s, 50s. By the time it's open, it was way, way down here by even 8 a.m. So look at this. But I'm not playing this. I'm not playing this. I'm waiting until the open. Okay. This is really lower. So again, look, weakness. Any questions about AMBA? So this was a huge, huge trade, but it rated so well. It, it showed immediate, immediate weakness. Let me take it off again. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful one. I didn't see where the low of the day went in this. Let me look. Low of the day was 42. Look at that. Yep. And this is clearly, this might even be lower tomorrow. Looks like it fell into the close. Any questions on any of the ones we just talked about? Any gaps from last week? AMBA, CN, any of the ones we just discussed? I'll go back. We're running a little late, Kathy. Thanks for letting me talk. Anyways, if you did all of the golden gaps last week, all the ones that we talked about just now, all the trades, this was not at the low of the day, but this is an advanced risk, and really Friday was the biggest of the days. You could have made almost $12,000 in one week. What if you couldn't take an advanced risk? Again, what is that? It's $1,000 or more. Then you take what you can afford. You take what you can afford. The, the, the idea is to be positive and make money. So if, if, you're, if you're making money, whether it's two grand a week, 12 grand a week, it's money. A lot of people don't know how to trade. They don't know what they're doing. They cannot do these picks that I'm giving every day in, in, in the room. They can't do them. They don't know what to look for. They don't know what to watch. They don't know where the entry is. They don't know what stock's able to watch. They don't know where they're going to drop, where to put the stop, anything. So this is what you come and learn from me. Okay, you're gonna have days if you come and decide to take my class and be in the room with me where you will have losses, but they won't be that often. And that is what you would, that's the reason to come and learn from me. And I'm rating the gaps in the morning, but you learn in the class to do it too. And everyone should be doing this themselves, it's in the room. Now, whether or not everybody does is a different story, but it helps your conviction if you do it yourself. I just looked it up, yeah, Amber was 24 points. In fact, this was the this was a note I wrote. Um, Amba looks good as long as it doesn't reverse swoosh. And boy, it didn't reverse swoosh. And I did give 42 as a target. Look at that. I gave 42, 45, and 42 as a targets in Amba. <laughs> and it got to 42. Wow, that's something. I've said 42 and it got to 42. I didn't even go back and look at that till now. Um, CTRP, I'll look at that when I get through the whole, I'll look at that at the end of the webinar here. Um, CN and DG was the same day, okay. I don't have that in here on, but I do uh, have the plays of the days for each of these reviews and some of the days I taped the room, which is on the YouTube if you wanna go back and watch the YouTubes. 
if you want to go back and watch them, but you'll learn where to put stops in all the six different entries that I do in the class. But if you wanted to know for these trades here, you can go back and look for the videos I have. I think I have them in the videos online. And actually, I did do a couple emails last week with the trades where I think I put the stops in the emails if you're on my marketing list. If you're not on my marketing list, I'll email me and I'll add you to it. Uh, what was I saying? Anyways, it's about the focus, okay? It's about the focus, and that's what you want to do. Um, Kathy, can you give me just five minutes here? Is it okay if we go over for like five minutes? Instead of plopping everybody in my room, are you okay with that? I just have a couple more minutes here. Okay, sorry we're going over. Anyways, just to, just to finish up what I'm saying, if you, if you learn what to do, you can apply this for longer time frames, but you gotta have a plan of action in place what you're gonna do. And I say to people, learn the system, learn what to do. Practice them with a small risk or practice on a demo if, if, if you feel comfortable. And then you can ease up your risk, $50, $100 increments, okay? That's what I suggest to people. The support of the live trading room helps you. It helps you get up to speed. It helps you play gaps. It helps you rate the gaps, okay? And then you can retake the class after the first time you do it. The following month, you can do one retake for free, and that will help you then after you've traded already for a month to review everything. And then you're really on your way doing it, and you can ask me questions and be in the room. I don't send out trade alerts usually. Um, uh, last week I did. I had a dentist appointment, so I had some, and I had. I was back at the dentist again today. I had some. I, if I can't be in the room for some reason or, or write the gap ratings or whatever, I, I like. I had to go to the dentist. I had some some dental work done, but normally just the people in the room get what I'm doing. I write it in the room, and then we discuss it, and then we do it. Is the, is the process. Does that make sense? Okay. But anyways, once you get good at this, then you can increase your risk. Then, then, then it's the sky's the limit. Okay. That's the whole point. That's what you want to do. All right. And, and, and I mean, that's the important thing is getting good. A lot of people, want to trade for many, many different reasons. For me personally, you know, I just needed to change careers. I just was doing mortgages and the industry was changing and I had to find a different job. It was 2007, 2008, I was looking for something else to do and I found out about trading the market, okay? And that's kind of how it happened for me. So whatever your reasons are that you want to do it, you have to think. But trading is a lifestyle choice because you got to get up in the morning, got to prep, got to trade, got to be there. Like I said, yeah, at least three, four days a week, preferably five. But the nice thing is you have the afternoons to yourself, okay? And you can make a lot of money trading, but you have to be able to know what you're doing, get the confidence in yourself, learn the system, and be able to take an advanced risk. And until you can, risk what you can, like I said. Any money is better money than you had yesterday if you didn't have any money or if you were losing yesterday. So whatever profit you can make is still more money today or tomorrow than you had the previous day. And I, you know, I, I say if you're a beginner, start out small, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, and step it up. Some people feel very, very good about trading right after the class and risk more. That's 100% up to you. But I say take your time with it. You have all the time in the world to make money. The fall, though, is a good time because we're going to get a lot of gaps. I was surprised about the number of things we had last week to do. I really, really was. Um, but this week will definitely be slow. But September, October, November should be really good months before we get up into the holidays. It is about focusing on the right information. You have to gain the skill. You gain the skill in the class. You learn what to look for. Then trading every day helps you with the skill. And that's how you're going to do it. Okay, and your goal is really to become a good trader because if you can become a good trader, then you're going to make money. You will never make money if you're not a good trader. It sounds easy when you say, well, you just follow someone like me. You can't have access to the room unless you do the class. My goal is to make people good traders because what if I don't run the room anymore someday? If I, if I stop running the room, how are people going to ever trade if they did my class or if they're in the room? you got to learn how to do it and you got to learn how to do it yourself. And that's what you learn from me. So you learn in the class of 26 points what to look for. And it's the idea of getting in and out very, very quickly. And you're booking money. You don't have the piggy targets. Many, many of these ones I just showed you, I could have made more in. 
I could have held them longer. What's, you know, you get to a point, it doesn't matter. You're, you're up, your goal's in for the day, you get out, okay? There will be some days where you have huge moves like AMBA on the Friday, but, you know, it's not every day. You got a couple trades like that a month, it's, it, you know, you take it. You're happy and you're grateful for what you get from the market. And you just get up every day and you think about what you're doing in that moment. It's, you know, we want to plan for the future as much as we can, but it's, you got to live in the moment. What am I doing today? I'm looking for one, a good one. Okay, let me rate the gap. Let me find a good one. Boom. It's, you're looking and you're just focusing on what you're doing today. Today, I want to have a good day. I have to stay focused. I have to be in the moment. Okay, it's, so many people are trying to just think too far in advance. It's, it's like a combination of planning for the future and living in the moment. And, and I don't want to get too off target again here, but that's, it's really, you have to think like both those things. You have to have a plan of action and plan for the future, but you have to live in the moment too about what you're doing. Anyways, if you want to learn one solid strategy, you can come to me. It's, you'll learn in the class all the points. You will be working from yourself from home or wherever you are in your office. And it's a nice job if you can do that. So you will learn a complete system to trade. My class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and pay stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Again, I'm focusing on the shorts, and the class is online. Now, the next class, I'm giving this far in advance, is September 16th and 17th and 18th. There's a caveat. The 18th is going to be a repeat of day one of the 16th. And I'm doing this for special for people that cannot do the class on the Saturday. It's from nine to five. So I'm actually doing day one twice. And I already have people sign up for that. They were special, have been requesting, requesting. Some people have religious conflicts with Saturday, Saturdays or, or have to work. I, I'm not gonna do this again, all right? I just had a bunch of people that have been emailing me that wanted to do it. They signed up, they've paid, okay? If you can't ever do Saturdays, I don't ever do the class on a weekday, usually. I do it Saturday and Sunday. If you have a conflict and you want to learn my system and you can't do it for whatever reason, you need to do this class because I, I can't tell you I'm ever, ever, ever doing it again outside of a Saturday and a date, okay? So it's because during the week I'm busy, I'm running room, I'm trading, I have things to do and other projects. So I do it on the weekends. So this is your only time if you can't do Saturdays to do the Sunday and Monday. You'll get the same class. Me, myself, I'm doing the repeat of the day one twice, but I already have people that have signed up and paid, and I promise to do it. So the cost of the class is $49.99. You can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up. Any questions here? How many trades a day in the room? Usually one, maybe two, okay? Maybe two. Um... Someone's asking me about those down gaps, JC. I will look at those for you. I already said about that date. Then I have the combo special. If you want to do the trends class and the golden gap course, you will save $500. If you sign up for both, you will save 500 bucks. The trends class talks about long-term tr trends. If you want to do swing trades or options or overnights, okay? That class is normally $9.99. You get half off if you sign up for both at the same time for the month of September. Now, I'm doing a Labor Day special and I gave time for everybody because I took a couple days off myself and I'm doing the webinar tonight. If you want to sign up for the class on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, you can sign up by this Friday, September 8th, and you will get the trading room free to the end of 2017 and the options letter free to the end of 2017. So the options letter gives you options trades. You just get them emailed to you. The trading room is live. You have to be in the room to get the calls. Same price. $49.99, this is a great deal. I'm doing this to help people make money right after the class. And actually, you can start to be in the room as of the 11th next week if you want, because this is only through this Friday, September 8th. Total savings on this is $2,600. This is really, really, really a nice deal because it's four months free in the room and normally a charge for the room and also four months free of the letter. How do you be in the trading room? You have to sign up for it, but you can only sign up for it after you are a student of the course. That's what I was explaining earlier. So you sign up for the gap class, then you can join the room. But if you sign up for the gap class in September, by this Friday, you will get the room free to the end of the year. And that's enough time to see if you even need the room, if you even want the room. I'm telling you, not everybody that I've ever taught is in the room. A lot of people are. But, you know, and some people leave, they come back, they trade in the room, and they miss me, and they come back. I've had a lot of people come back this year. You don't have to be in the room. You're going to learn everything in the class I know as far as how to take the trades. But, but, but that extra oomph, me singing it, 
calling it live, doing it, just being there, saying this is the best one, the points, all of it, my analysis, which is better than anybody, helps. So you would you could be in the room for four months for free after the class in September and then decide, well, I don't need her. I'm seeing the one she's seen. I don't have to pay to be in the room as of 2018. And that's another reason why the free time is good. Uh, thank you for the great class. You're welcome. So anyways, remember the Labor Day special because this is a good deal. And I'll put everybody on the list and send some out reminders this week. Um, and just think about it. I mean, your time is valuable. I'd spend it wisely. You know, 16 hours is a long class, but I give you everything in one shot. At least you'll know what to do. You can go in and start trading, but the, the good thing is you don't have to trade all day. I mean, that is such a positive, positive, positive thing. You only just have to trade in that first half an hour. It's one of the most attractive things about day trading gaps, and you can do it. I mean, this is real. I mean, it's been a really great year. I have to update the tracking. I've had some tracking videos on YouTube, uh, but I have to update the last month. I'm trying to get caught up this week. This is one of the reasons I took off this week to get caught up for stuff I have to do for the business, but, and I'm redoing the website, but I'm telling you, it's, it's been a good year. I mean, it really, really has been a very strong year and I've been trading now this system for a long time and I'm getting better. I mean, it's, you know, it's just like anything else. I'm getting better. If I can ever get to the point that I hardly ever lose, uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm definitely better now than I was when I started the business. I'm better now than I was 12 months ago. I'm, I'm better now than I was in January. I'm getting better. So for the people that have been with me, it's been very, very obvious. And people are starting to increase their risk. And it's, it's all good. I mean, it really, really is just been a very positive year all around. Um, all right, let's quickly look at JC's things here, and then I will. JC wants to look at something. Kathy, you've been so good. I'm almost done here. CTR, PCN, and DG. You chose CTRP to watch trade, but ended up it's the first one that bounced went up the rest of the day. Um, Kathy's gonna kick me out here because we're late, late, way late. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rate these right here tonight but let me just eyeball these quick for jc i don't even remember looking at this was this the night before or in the morning this i don't even remember if i looked at this one i just saw cn and i said this is this is good i mean i just was like boom 831 This was in the morning. I don't know what this would have rated without, like I said, without doing it, but it would not have rated as well as CN, number one. Let's just look and see what it did in the morning because you said you did it. Did you, obviously, if you did it, you lost money. Let's just see if it even set up. Let me just look at the one minute chart. This had a move. You could have done it for a quick move. You would have had to get out. I This did not fail. This dropped a buck. You would have had to aggressively do it, and you would have had to get out. If you did not do that, it flipped, yes. But you could have made money shorting this. This would not have rated anywhere near as good as CN. That's number one. Number two, I didn't even pay any attention to this, so I obviously didn't like it. Um, but you could have theoretically done this at the right place and got out at the right place. I'm guessing you didn't do that, but you, you could have theoretically made a buck in this. You waited too long. Yeah. I, I wasn't crazy, but I don't even remember looking at this. And if I don't remember looking at it, then I didn't like it. Cause in my mind, usually if I have a couple things, I will read a couple things. CN was like, boom, doom. Mm. Sometimes I just look at them like Amba. I was like, oh, my Lanta, you know? But in this case here, you could have, if you had aggressively done it in the time period that I trained, you could have done the setup. The setup was here. Now, let me just see where you, if you would, well, 49 would have been the first target. So yeah, I mean, you could have, you could have done it and actually got out of 49. So I don't think you would have missed the exit. If you had aggressively done it, which you didn't, because you didn't do my class, but if you had, you would have been looking for an exit around 49-ish, which it did and then it bounced. See, here's the bounce. You dropped in the first target, boom. 48.95, got the bounce here, dropped one more point and fell. So I don't know what the second or third target would have been, but it did get to the first target and then it had the big bounce. 
So, you know, you might not have gotten a dollar here. You might actually have only gotten about 50 some cents because this did have the big bouncer. But I, I, I don't like this gap. And do you see what this has done here since then? And, and I'll let everybody go because I know I'm talking. Thanks to Kathy. This, first of all, it flipped on the day, which is, was insane. It looks like it ran all the way back up from where it was almost the previous day. But secondly, what has it done since then? It's just kind of pittered around. So this is a piece of crap, is what I say. This is like not doing anything right. A, it fell in the gap, fell, dropped a buck, flipped, rallied huge, got bought, and then didn't go anywhere after. So not only has it not gone lower since the gap down, it hasn't gone higher either. This is like no play. I wouldn't touch this. I wouldn't do anything. You can't buy this here. You can't short this here. Just leave it alone. It did not act right in the gap. I did not like it. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have shorted it. I wouldn't have bought it. But either way, there's nothing here. So, so some gaps won't rate well. You don't do anything with them. Just because somebody doesn't rate good as a short doesn't mean you're going to buy it. I don't know if that makes any sense. But this was just leave it alone. This is this looks dangerous actually. Just it's crap. All right, have a good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. If you're interested in the special, this is a great deal. Email me, okay? Email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. I think I answered everyone's questions. I hope I did. Good participation here. And um, have a wonderful evening, okay? Thank you. You appreciate my time? Thank you so much. And thanks, Kathy, too. <laughs> hey, Koala Bear. Happy Labor Day, everyone. <laughs>